We have a bit of an issue with a marine environment on the east coast of Tasmania. This is Centrostephanus sea urchin, or what's more commonly known as longspine sea urchin. Centra are what we call a range extended species. While not formally native to Tassie, they've made their way down here over the last 50 years from the mainland of Australia. Centra don't present an issue when kept in low enough numbers, but when the numbers and density build up, they'll overgraze a reef to the point of barren, or to put it simply, they'll eat all the seaweed until there's none left. Over the last five years, the Tasmanian Commercial Divers Association have been diving for these urchins and working to establish a market for them both nationally and internationally. We now remove in the vicinity of 500 tonne a year, or what equates to around 1.5 million sea urchins. The harvest of these urchins is helping to stop the growth of the population and barrens and giving reefs a chance to recover. Sea urchins are harvested and then processed for their insides, which are called roe or uni, and sold as a food product worldwide. All this has been possible thanks to an industry collaboration between the Tasmanian Commercial Dive Fishery and Tasmanian Abalone Industry, bolstered by the creation of the ARF, which is the Abalone Industry Reinvestment Fund. So the first urchin was discovered uh, in St Helens in 1978 on the Tasmanian mainland. Um, and since then the population continued to grow as the sea urchin larvae travelled down on the East Australian current from mainland New South Wales. So we did surveys in 2002 and 2017 uh, and in that time uh, populations off the east coast of Tasmania grew from 3% uh, urchin barren uh, to 15% urchin barren. So IMAS has been monitoring the fishery for over a decade now and in that time we've seen the fishery go from really small to Tasmania's third largest wild harvest fishery behind uh, rock lobster and abalone. It's now uh, harvested between 400 and 500 tonnes per annum. So that's a, over a million sea urchins coming out per year. At that rate, that is outstripping the growth of the population, or at least the historical growth of the population of sea urchins has been growing about 190 tonnes per year, and we've been harvesting over 400 tonnes a year. So that's obviously putting downward pressure uh, on the urchin population. And we're starting to see results of that, um, and there's indicators of the stresses on the fishery. So the, the average size of the sea urchin harvest is coming down, uh, fishers are having to move to get their catch, they're going further from port, they're having to move and fish in deeper water. And some of our research is also showing the abundance is coming down in heavily fished areas. Uh, and most importantly, we're actually seeing kelp regrow in the heavily fished areas. So we're actually seeing habitat recovery. It started off as a um, pioneering industry within Tasmania for a commercial harvest of, of Centra Stephanus. And it's, you know, from its early days, when it first kicked off, you're looking at um, processing max targets around sort of 1,500 to 2,000 um, kilos a day. Since then, uh, we've worked on our processes, worked on the quality of the product, looking at expanding our markets, um, obviously dealing with our um, suppliers, the divers, and we're now at a stage where we're sort of regularly processing four to four and a half tonne of, of green weight a day. Um, five days a week. As our, as our brand, as our, our product gains more, um, repu more of a reputation in, in the marketplace, uh, we're noticing a, a demand for the product increase, which is really good to see, really pleasing to see. We're certainly at a point now, I guess, in an enviable position where we can sell everything we process. Yeah, so everything we do in urchins, is, everything's done by hand. So there's, there's no automation, there's no machines um, involved in the process at all. And it's resource heavy. It it's, takes a lot of people to process four tonne of fish a day. You know, if you go in and you're able to view it firsthand, then you really do get a comprehension of just how many people it takes to, you know, process that many fishing and, and get them ready for market too, because each day, most of our fish from each day's harvest is, is on a plane that, that evening and on its way across wherever it's going in the world. We feel it generates and feeds a lot back into the Tasmanian community and certainly regional Tasmanian communities. And we are seeing the benefits uh, of removing 500 tonne a year for the last couple of years. And we're having to range further and further each day to get out the same catch as what we 
had in previous years. You've gone from fishing in one little isolated bay for your catch, now to you might have to have two or three jumps to get that same amount. And we're also seeing a big increase in our depth range where we've previous from 12 to 15 metres, now we're going down to 25 metres. Everyone's having to use nitrox just to be competitive enough to get that catch for the day. The only cost effective way is by harvesting them, which we've shown over the last four years were very effective in removing them from traditionally high value areas and areas that we have fished and gone back to and had a look, we have seen that we've got recruitment of abalone and rock lobster stocks in those areas, a lot more scale fish on the bottom. It's just a win-win situation for everyone in that aspect. So the AIRF stands for Abalone Industry Reinvestment Fund. It was a fund uh, that we established in 2018. The primary purpose of the fund was to invest $5 million over five years uh, to improve the health of Tasmania's east coast. And one of the main objectives was to assist the acceleration of the harvest of Centra Stephanus by commercial uh, urchin divers, uh, to support and assist uh, the development of the Centro sector. And what that really looked like for the Centro or the urchin divers was a subsidy which they could use to offset some of their costs of operation. Now I'd say that it's certainly achieved that outcome. Uh, catches per year prior to the subsidy that we introduced, harvesters increased 500%. It's, it's, it's worked and I think it's worked a lot better than, we, than all of us originally expected. So we're very happy. This is a program that can never stop. While there's a population or a, a biomass of Centrostephanus that exists on the east coast of Tasmania, it, it has to be persistently harvested. So this, this industry is obviously helping the biodiversity of all on, along the bottom and everything everywhere and helping out not only the abalone, the crayfish, and all the other um, scale fishes and um, all coming back and bottom all coming back to what it used to be years ago. I don't see an alternative. Um, you're not going to go out there and do it for fun. We go like the clappers underwater because the more we harvest, the more we get paid. They're going to keep recruiting to our waters. You just don't remove them and the problem solved. They're going to be here and here to stay. So we need a, a control measure that will, you know, extend the test of time through the years and into decades. That will be cost effective through time um, and at the moment commercial fishing is the one uh, that ticks all those boxes. We get a lot of questions from the general public as to what they can do to help and everyone wants to do the right thing and um, the best thing we, we can say is put them on your menu. Um, they've got a delicious row inside and more, more, of, uh, more people going out and putting them on the menu and actually eating them at home uh, the more that will come out the water basically.